All right, today we're gonna to talk about this problem in throttle chops. But before we get into the details on that, I want you to take a look at another section of the log where I do throttle pumps. We're just pumping the throttle up and down. The differential between the two is one is at zero throttle where the, the props are spinning all the way down to the, to the lowest thrust that Betaflight will allow. The other part when you're doing throttle pumps, you're not really at zero throttle here. You're going to have the motor spinning up. You can see in this section we're at 25% throttle. They're going up to like 50% throttle and then down. So in a throttle pump scenario, typically you're not going all the way down, chopping to zero and kind of holding it there and letting the craft kind of try to orient and rely a lot on air mode, honestly, uh, with everything and also the pit authority that you have when you're down at zero throttle. So take a look at this section. You can see the differential on the nose bobble where in this section, there really isn't any nose bobble. We only really get it when we do the throttle chop. So check a look at that and then we'll come back on the other side. Okay, as you can see, you know, there was the slightest bit of little twitch, but hardly, you know, there wasn't really any bobble, especially on the horizon line that was pretty flat. There might have been just a little bit of yaw. And the yaw twist, if you're doing throttle moves and you're having any kind of yaw twist issue, what you want to be looking at there, and you might have to go off the sliders for this because the sliders, in my opinion, have a pretty low yaw for like a five inch quad. It makes sense for smaller quads like. Um, the toothpick classes that have a really high power to weight ratio. But if you're getting any yaw twitches on any of these in either a throttle chop or throttle pumps, increase your P term on yaw. I usually would run it about the same as the I term. So you'd have a P of 90 and maybe an I term of 90 as well. So that's the yaw scenario. Looking at the log for this specific section, you can see that even with the expo on, we really don't have any deviation of the gyro on the pitch axis, you know, whatsoever. I can kind of highlight that and you can highlight. So if I just kind of open that up, you can see I can hover over the gyro signal and it highlights it, but I can't really see any differential here between the gyro signal and the set point, sorry. So the cyan line here versus the green line, you can't really see any different differential between the two. There's a slightest a bit. No, that's actually, no, that's the, uh, that's actually not it either. That's the I term going up and down. So there's, again, there's really not any twitching there going on as I'm throttle pumping it. However, when I go to this section of the log where I can clearly see I'm going at 100% throttle and then just throttle chopping it, you can see in that section, as we showed in the intro, how it the nose really dips down and I actually get kind of a roll move as well. So it like dips down and rolls. And that is a result of just an imbalance in the quad. And you can see it here, obviously, in the logs as well. So if I play this forward a little bit, I think. Let me see if I could turn the speed down. Yeah, it's hard to see it. My computer might not be able to process everything, but, but you can see that bouncing around there a little bit. You know, that bounce where it goes down and then corrects back. It almost looks like I'm moving the sticks. But I'm not. That's just the quad doing that. And in that case, anti-gravity is boosted in this section down here where you're chopping the throttle. But it's not really helping. Um, this is really, when you look at the logs and the dynamics of what's going on there, you can see it's starting to go off course here. If we specifically just look at the pitch access and you can see how the gyro trace right here is going up above the set point, that's it dipping down. And the I term here, which is, you know, has a rear bias. So it's leaning the quad forward. That's the reason it's doing that. You can see along this whole stretch here, 
that the I term, since it's up above, this quad is heavy to the rear, right? So as I'm going full throttle, I term is accumulated there to keep it on balance. But then when I jump off the throttle, it changes everything. And it's not necessarily heavy in the rear. It's just, you know, you got to keep in mind the quad's leaning forward, right? So as I'm punching up into the air, that the air mass is hitting the back and it's wanting to push the quad down. So the I term is correcting to push it up. And then when you chop throttle, that I term is accumulated and it and it there's no more pressure here from the air pushing on the back of the quad. So it dips forward. And then we have some off balance here as well. Um, that could just be a motor, one motor spinning up differently than one side or the other. I'm not exactly really sure why this that little yaw twitch happens. And the eye comes in and accumulates it, but you're still going to get that eye bounce back because eye takes time. So really the issue here is we need a stronger P term. However, these PIDs are tuned in. You can see with the throttle punches and that things of that nature that I can't really go much higher on the PIDs. And, and honestly, with this quad, I have these derivatives at 40. So the, the PD balance on this quad is where it needs to be, you know, for no bounce backs with feed forward turned off and all that jazz. So my P gain in the relation to my D gain, that's a locked ratio, right? So I can move my PD gain up together. I can move the slider for PD gain or just manually move them up together, keeping that same ratio. And just so we're on the same page, that ratio is 59 divided by 42 for the roll axis. So my PD ratio or PD balance ratio is 1.4. So if I move my D gain up, I have to, whatever I set the D gain at, so say I set it at 50, I'd have to take 50 times 1.4. So I'd have to put my P gain at 70 to keep that ratio the same. And that's what will keep that bounce back uh, not occurring. And it kind of keeps those two, the spring and the shock absorber all in balance. So I can't change the PD balance ratio. It's not like I can just move the P term up. On the flip side of this, I can't move my D gains up any higher. So on this quad, if I move my D term up anything above 45 to 50, right around 50, 55, it starts to oscillate and trill. So this is what I'm talking about. So on this log, I move my D gains up to 50 and my P gains up a proportion. I said it was 70. I guess I had it a little bit lower here. I think I was using the slider. So this ended up being at 67, 67, 70. It's, they're close enough. They're not that sensitive. Anyways, you can see the P gain, the D gains of 50 here. And I moved these up uh, quarterly. Maybe it was a little lower on that ratio. But I, what I probably did is just took it times 1.4 instead of the 1.460, oh, blah, 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 whatever I just did in that other math. And you can see with that kind of higher D gain, a D gain of 50, with this quad, I start to get the trilling and the, the oscillates. You can hear it as soon as you arm, you know, even down here, as soon as I armed, you could start to hear that D term oscillation. And that's how you know you can't go any higher with your PD gains because the balance between P and D is locked because we've determined that with the flips and rolls. And then you can move your PD gain up to give the PID controller more authority over the craft to, you know, be strong as it can be in high, you know, roll and high impact moves. So you can move that PD gain up, but you can only move that PD gain up so far because the D term starts to limit you. You'll start to get this trilling. You'll start to get these oscillations and it's a D term issue. And you got to really watch here because if you start to hear that in a, in a flight at all, you need to move that down pretty quick because the motors can get really hot really fast, even in forward flight. Here, I was actually kind of pushing a little bit, but they were warm when they came down. So this trilling, you really got to be careful about. And you can see that oscillation doesn't go away. If you are looking at logs, you can, it's super easy to recognize because it's this like perfect sinusoidal oscillation. It's not a noise thing where it's all jagged. It's just sinusoidal up and down so at the end of the day coming back to this log you know mid you know somewhere between 40 and 50 is as high as i can go on my d gain and the p gains lock is associated to that so what do we do in this scenario you know we're kind of up against it we can't move our pids up the pd balance is is figured out and our pids just don't have enough authority 
when the throttles chopped to zero to address this issue fast enough, like the P terms not having enough authority. And whenever the P term doesn't have enough authority, that's when I term comes in and, and takes care of things. Like it's the same with, with if you get bounce back, I term bounce back, but it's because your P term's not strong enough and you have too much delay between when you're rolling the sticks. So the I term comes in and starts to make the quad not bounce back. However, since the I term takes so long to react, you get that, that bounce. It's kind of like the same thing on flips and rolls. When your P term is not strong enough and or you don't have feet forward or something of that nature, and you do a sharp move, the P term pushes it, the quad to follow the set point. And if the P term's not pushing hard enough or fast enough, or you don't have any feed forward, I term comes along for the ride to help push because something's gotta get the quad moving to track the set point. The problem with I term is it, it accumulates, so it will have a tendency to overshoot. And that's exactly the scenario here. You have this overshooting. I term is coming in to correct the imbalance, but it's then now overshooting, so you're getting that bounce, and then that we saw there. So luckily, we have smart people like Chris Thompson and some of the beta flight devs working on this. We were mixing it up, talking about this issue, and he went ahead and is working on some code, or already has worked on some code, that when anti-gravity is triggered, and it actually has two different cutoffs. So right now, anti-gravity has its own cutoff that when you move the sticks, uh, that's when it detects it, you know, your fast throttle pumps and boosts the I term, that the P term would have its own cutoff value that would be in the CLI, more of an advanced tuning thing that you could turn that. So you could actually turn the I term boosting off if you wanted and have it just do the B, P term boosting based on it, your fast throttle sticks. Anyways, he has a uh, branch of this already cut and I'm going to do some testing on this this coming week, but you can see some promising results. So here is... Um, some flights he was doing where he's full throttle and then go ahead and cut in the throttle just like we were talking there and you can see here this is the just the old anti-gravity and you can see the I term boosting down here that's what this debug is down here Let me get down here you can see that debug here and we talk about like when I talk about how you know when you get off the throttle that's when anti-gravity boosts the most you can see it's boosting here as he's getting up through the throttle um, but when you get off of it as well. So anti-gravity boosts in two scenarios. When you pump the throttle up, it boosts, and when you pump the throttle down. So it's really based on fast stick movements. So when you're at full throttle, it's not boosted. But when you're going on to full throttle or off full throttle or any, anywhere in between where you're moving the throttle real quick, that's when your anti-gravity is kicking in and boosting. You can see this in your goggle OSDs if you have the anti-gravity element turned on. But anyways, you can see it boosting down here, and then this one is with the P-term boost, and you can see the difference here that we're seeing. Here we still have that the gyro signal going off the set point, as we just demonstrated in some flights I was having, and here we do not. I mean, it, there's a little bit, this is just a little bit of just a vibration, and you know, that's kind of within the margin of error, I guess. But here you can see that that P-term boost has really shortened that gap so much so that you wouldn't see this part in the HD. You wouldn't see this in your HD or DVR or through the FPV feed or anything of that nature. As long as you don't see it, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's exciting stuff. Here's just another pair of tests doing the same thing here, showing the classic then showing uh, it's just some different, just two different tests here showing the same results. So you can see it's much better here than with the classic again. And this is what I kind of love about the beta flight approach. It's not, you know, code something up and it's like this subjective thing that people say, yeah, it's good. No, it's, it's like proven through logs. So if you're interested in checking that out, here is the repo for that. So let's talk about that a little bit, how this works. So what guys will do is they will fork beta flight and it goes into their own repo. You can see this is Chris's and I have my own as well. I'm not uh, as good as coding. Chris isn't really a coder either. He knows a lot more about flight dynamics, but he's better at it than I am maybe in a bunch of years. Chris has been with the Betaflight project for a really long time. He forked it and what they'll do is just start doing different coding things. So you can see here's some branches he has. So this is, he's also looking at some changes to thrust familiarization. So here's that one branch with both of them in the mix, and you can actually go to the commits to see, so this is the whole copy of Betaflight, and then these two commits are changes he's doing in the code, so you can actually click on this code up here, and this is the change that he's implemented. All the lines in green here are new code lines 
all the lines in red are taken out. So a lot of times you'll see like this code line's taken out, but it's actually just replaced. It's taking this one line out, but adding, which is basically this back again, it's just really modifying this line, but then it's adding all this content below it to boost the P term. Again, same thing here, you're taking this line out, but you're adding these all these lines in below it. So with this, if you're interested in flying this, this code, uh, let me know, I can make a cut. There's really only four key targets anymore in Betaflight, so it's really easy. I'm gonna actually go ahead and cut these four hex files a while, and then you can just load them manually onto your flight controller with the associated config file. And uh, yeah, right here, so there's an extra variable added in. This is this anti-gravity smoothing filter cutoff. So the anti-gravity P smoothing filter cutoff, and you can see there's the, the classic one. This is the high pass filter that detects the uh, motion of the stick. So if you wanted your anti-gravity, that's another little tip. Right now, that's exposed in the CLI, this one, this variable right here. So if you wanted your anti-gravity to kick on, but kick on with slighter throttle movements where you're not moving it just as, as, as fast, you would actually reduce this cutoff maybe to like 10. So then as you move your sticks even slower, it would kick on anti-gravity or kick it on faster and harder up to its full extent. If you wanted it to kick on less, you'd move this up, maybe to like 20, 25 at the most, probably. I mean, you can move it up. Obviously, you can move it up too far, it just never activates. And if you move it down too far, it just activates all the time. So that's what those cutoffs are for, for. Like I said, it's a high pass filter here. And this is, I believe, something similar. I have to look through it, but that looks like to me how it's gonna be shaped up. And it'll just be CLI stuff that um, most users probably won't mess with, but uh, yeah, that's the nuts and bolts of how the stuff works. Okay, so that is it. Hopefully you found that helpful. Again, if you'd like to fly this uh, test code, um, he's been flying it, I'm gonna fly it here. I'm sure it's safe. It's really just Betaflight 4.2 with a couple changes in there. Um, and his thrust linearization changes as well, which helps. So one thing, if you're not into that, that you can keep in mind is one thing you can do that I it would help with this as well as implementing thrust linearization. I have a video on that, just released it. So that will increase your PIDs down at zero throttle. So that will help with this to give the P term and the D term more authority to fight any movement. So that's one thing you can do just right now with Betaflight without trying any test code. This is kind of another approach um, where you wouldn't be relying on thrust linearization necessarily to help with a crutch on this where it would just add some additional stuff to anti-gravity uh, to boost the p-term uh, right there so either way you know check it out with thrust linearization if you're having this bobble issue when you're dropping the throttle down or if you're when you're doing the throttle pumps um, well the first thing is if you're having bobbles make sure that that pd gain is as high as it can be right up to where you get the d-term trilling or oscillation then back it down a little bit and if that's, if you have your P and D balanced correctly and then you move them both up till you get to the trilling and then back down a little bit, well, now the balance is where it needs to be and they can't go any higher. So it's as much authority as you can get. You can start to do things like either move them up a little bit more, but then use TPA to kind of linearly move them down as your throttle goes up. But you can see on my PD balance, I was getting that trilling just about as soon as I start to take off. So it, you know, I, it's as up as high as it can get, you know, trying to reduce the PIDs as I got throttle higher really wasn't going to help. In this scenario, thrust linearization makes a lot of sense where you can just boost them at the bottom. Um, again, if you're up near the limit though already, you're probably not going to be able to use a ton of thrust linearization. So that gets some limits there as well. Um, but it might help a little bit. And then, you know, hopefully we'll see some improvements here, uh, maybe some new additional code as part of anti-gravity, and that will help hopefully maybe just eliminate this issue altogether. Again, thanks for your time, and I hope this helped.